Until now, it's been a waiting game in the village of Bihau. Okay, quantos dos Sardinas? Sí, dos. But today, we're heading off. You want to take all of this? No, just the snack. We've connected with 20 migrants, and they're allowing us to document their journey into the jungle, where kidnappings and killings are rife. They've come from Southeast Asia and Africa, and are risking everything for a chance at a better life in the United States. Everyone is running away from something. Though what exactly? I'm yet to find out. The Darien is a drug trafficking corridor between Colombia and Panama. It's also home to notorious leftist guerrilla fighters known as FARC. Local guides will take us in boats to the end of the river and then through the jungle on foot. Our destination is Paya, a native village on the Panama side of the Darien. Once inside Panama, the migrants will have another six borders to cross before reaching the United States. Our local guides can mean the difference between living and dying out here. 20, you give him. As the migrants wait anxiously in the boats, a dispute breaks out. No. We are nine of us. Nine. We paid all the money. One, two, three, four. Hey, I'll give you the money. Seven, eight. Collect, give him, give him the money. The guides are asking for more money. Three times the agreed upon price. Change that money to him. We paid all the money. Everything. No one has any leverage out here. $600 each. $600? Carlos, my local producer, and I negotiate. <laughs> the migrants tell me the locals are profiting from their misery. But the villagers themselves suffer poverty and the corrupting effects of the drug trade. 300 each. 30 each, okay. It's fine, yeah? No. No? No. Okay. It's not fine. But we need our guides to keep us safe. So we pay up and head off. Hi, sir. I ride with Abrima, a political activist from Gambia. Brima tells me he fled after learning his name was on a government hit list, leaving his pregnant wife and two children behind. He's never heard of the Darien Gap. He just knows there's a jungle he must cross if he wants to reach the United States. We leave the water, and the hardest part of our journey begins. We will have to scale steep ravines and navigate muddy tracks strangled by thick jungle. Within minutes of stepping under the canopy, we feel sealed off from the outside world. There's no map, no coordinates to follow. Satellite phones rarely get a signal. We're aiming for a stone obelisk that we're told marks the border. If we're lucky, we'll get there in two days. Allah. Allah help me. Allah. 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 
Allah Allah Thousands of migrants trekked this route last year. Some after fleeing the wars in Syria and Afghanistan. Nobody knows how many died out here. In my experience, most refugees are ordinary people forced to take extraordinary risks. Ready, guys? Yeah, we should be able to. Like Abrima, who's seeking political asylum in the U.S. Like my father, who left Iran for a chance at a better life. And like Evelyn, the only woman in our group. Are you scared about this trip? Very, very scared. But I don't have any choice. With the war that we have in Cameroon, Boko Haram killing all our brothers. We don't have no choice than to run, yes. to go and hide ourselves somewhere. She struggles up the mud slick hills where you can't get a foothold, enduring unbearable heat and humidity. Evelyn tells me she was a hairdresser in her home country, Cameroon. Now she's in the fiercest of jungles, scarcely able to breathe. Rotting trees snag at my feet. I've trekked in jungles before, but here the menace and isolation are incomparable. Then, a reminder of a danger bigger than the jungle itself. The skull faces toward Panama, presumably a warning to anyone who dares enter Colombian FARC territory. We're feeling rattled and move quickly to find the others. Traveling in a group gives the comfort of strength in numbers. But that's an illusion. We lean on each other, but in our minds, we're on our own. All of a sudden, I got fucked. Yeah, my mommy. Pensé que iba a llegar hasta allá perfecto, pero voy a llegar hecho mierda, pero llego, de que llego y llego. Drenched in sweat, Carlos sucks on glucose. The jungle is cruel. It soaks you as it sucks you dry. We're guzzling liter after liter of precious water, unsure of when we'll find it again. Momir, one of the Bengalis, says he's feeling feverish and can't go on. He begs someone to help him carry his bag. 
Yes. Open here and you see the everything. Open. But there are no takers. <laughs> He's forced to decide which of his meager possessions he can do without, so he can keep walking. We had hoped to reach the border by nightfall, but our pace is slower than expected. Hey, brother, man. The rows of leafcutter ants that line the trail make it look easy. Look at the forest. I've never moved in this type of forest since I'm born. Even in Africa, I don't know this type of forest. Very hard. But too difficult for a woman. Give it to you. Yes, too much for me, too much. You're the only Very woman. Uh, the only woman. After 12 brutal hours hiking in treacherous conditions, we finally stop and make camp for the night. So we are ready. Camping. 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 Until 5 o'clock morning. So tired. Oh. But you lie down, sleep, sleep. The mosquitoes out here are relentless. And as darkness falls, their appetite intensifies. Finish. Again. No. Finish. Finish. Thank you. Zika virus, dengue, and yellow fever are all prevalent here. The migrants will sleep in the open, fodder for swarming bats and mosquitoes. Cookies. Cookies. The Bengalis wash down vanilla cookies with the last of their water. The jungle is not easy. But you have seen it with your eye. Abrima's traveled for weeks to get this far. He traveled from Gambia to Ecuador, where entry visas are not required. From there, he traveled overland to get to Colombia. But this, without a doubt, is the toughest part of his journey. Have you ever done this tired before? No, never encountered tiredness like this before. Never happens to my life since. This one? Never. You're going to be okay? Oh, sure, sure, sure. It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay, you know. But it's not easy, absolutely. I'm sure it's going to be okay. Yeah, I'll make it to the final destination. Yeah, man. Even if Abrima makes it into Panama, there will still be five more countries to cross before reaching the United States. It's believed that 25,000 migrants crossed into Panama last year. But in the middle of our journey, the country's president announces the rules have changed. Panama will no longer turn a blind eye to these arrivals. Instead, Anyone crossing without permission will be rejected, without exception. Tomorrow we'll push to the border. We don't know what will happen when we get there. Good night. The police team ready. <laughs> the hangover of a rough night's sleep is tempered by the prospect of reaching the Panama border. Let's go. 
It's a mixture of nerves and excitement. The border is hidden somewhere deep in the jungle ahead. When we cross it, we'll still have at least 30 kilometers to walk to get back to civilization. We're anxious about meeting the Panama border police, called Senefron. They usually focus on drug trafficking. Now they have new orders to stop migrants. We worry that it could cause problems for the group we're traveling with. Just a few more minutes to the border. So this is the final push and then we're in Panama. Let's go. At last, we reach the border of Colombia and Panama, the hinge of South and Central America. A stone obelisk peeks through the trees as a marker. The migrants are not out of the Darien yet, but they enjoy the moment as they should. They've just left another continent behind. How do you feel? You think you can make it all the way? Yeah, That's one. I'll make it, inshallah. By the grace of God, I will make That's it. One. Because I think the hardest side of the journey is almost done. What I encountered, I never encountered this throughout my life. It's too hard. Give me some peace to your heart. What is the problem, amigo? No, no. What is the problem? We're in Panama now, and with the border closed only days ago, the guides are edgy. They could be arrested for helping migrants cross the border. I remember the Panamanian law. They decide we should split up. We gotta tell them, look man, if the police catch you with these guys, these guys go to jail. They say the trail is very easy to follow, and it's about two hours to the Paya River, and the village is just after that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, okay? Yeah. Ah, okay. Okay, we'll see you in fire. See you, take care, okay? See you. See you there. As I wave goodbye, it crosses my mind I may never see them again. We'll travel separately to maximize everyone's safety. We stay with our guides and the migrants walk ahead. The guides set a blistering pace. And then, they're gone. I become paranoid I'm being set up for an ambush. I can't see the guides. Or Carlos. Or Roger, our cameraman. I'm all alone. Dizzy. Lost. We prepared nine months for this journey, taking every precaution. The migrants came with nothing, not knowing what they were getting themselves into. Out here, the line between survival and oblivion is a slippery one.
Finally, Carlos staggers in. But there's no sign of the guides. I thought, wait a second, I have all the money in my bag. And they know I have money. So maybe they set up an ambush or something like that. I'm walking in. Yeah, but these guys, they hug you. Yeah. You know, you disappear here. Mm -hmm. They bury you. Who the hell is going to find you, man? And they're going back. That's it. That's it. It's hardcore place. Like here, you don't want to have an enemy on these people, yeah. really, because yeah. they, can go they hug you. Yeah. yeah. It's tricky, man. Tricky place. With the guides gone, we attempt to find the river and a way out of here on our own. Our satellite tracker isn't working because of the thick jungle canopy and cloud cover. We have no idea where we are or where the migrants are. They'll also be looking for a way out of here with no guides, not even a compass. So we've been hiking for the last two hours with all of our bags and we're tapped out on water. We're still up at altitude, so we're in a bit of a fix right now. We gotta get to a water source one way or the other. We've got iodine, so we can purify it, but we need to get something in our system because we're all getting a little dizzy. And it's getting darker. Carlos is getting desperate. He drinks from a dirty puddle. He's past caring about sickness and disease. And then... Adelante. <laughs> <laughs> we walk right into border guard soldiers. Thank you, my friend. It's the first time in my life I'm relieved to face the barrel of an automatic rifle. The migrants are here as well. They're under armed guard. We can't talk to them or film. No, no, no. No grabes. Don't record. As we're led away, I hear a Brima call out to me. Don't forget about us, brother. We have the right passports, which means we're free to enter Panama. But in a devastating blow, an officer tells us the migrants will all be sent back into the Darien, given no chance to prove if they are refugees under the UN Convention. If they'd arrived five days earlier, their fate would be different, and they'd now be continuing north towards the US. They might have given them some water, but they have to march back up the same way they came into Colombia. He said it's a presidential order, it's out of his control, he's torn, but those are the orders, so. Looks like they're all on their way back to Colombia as we speak. It's unthinkable. The Darien Crossing is the darkest passage of the global migration phenomenon. Our reporting bears witness to this journey but we still don't know how the story ends for the 20 migrants we traveled with. I've reached out to some of them, but my emails have gone unanswered. It's been four months since I returned from the Darien, 
and my hope of hearing from them is fading. But I hope all the same. <laughs>